Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Did your corn stand well this year? Did it hold up all the way through harvest? Or did you see some stalks starting to give out? It could be from a stock rot issue. And we're going to talk about stock rots on today's show. Another thing we're going to discuss today is deep soil tests. Are you testing your soil below six inches deep? We're going to talk about why you may want to consider that at least on a few spots on your farm. Well, you don't have to dig very deep to dig out our weed of the week out of your fields. It's not this huge, really tough plant, but it can be annoying. We'll show you how to get it under control. But first, here's our farm basics. These days, it can be hard to make the math work in your soybean fields. With the Liberty Link system with Liberty Herbicide, it gets easier. A two plus bushel per acre advantage over Asgrow Roundup ready to extend soybeans means at least $18 more an acre for you. Plus, lower system input costs and more complete weed control all adds up to at least $33 more an acre for your farm. That's smart math. Grow smart with BASF. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about how insects can survive the winter. All right, Brian, you got a prop here. You got a corn stalk. What are you, yep. what are you looking for? What are you seeing? Well, first of all, let me just say that insects' whole goal is to survive as long as they can and obviously to reproduce. So you got to look at the insect that is the target here. What is damaging your crop? With some insects, the eggs are going to survive over the winter. And then with other insects, it's that actual adult insect that's going to survive. So yes, I am holding a prop, but I'm really not going to find a whole lot of anything in here right now. We're lucky we don't have any bugs that are going to try to survive in this stock. But a couple of the insects I think about are corn rootworms, for example. There are going to be eggs that are going to survive the winter. It's kind of difficult to identify little eggs sitting in the ground. On the other hand, you've got in soybeans, we have bean leaf beetles. Well, the actual adult beetle will burrow itself down into the soil and try to survive winter. So we want to talk about how farmers could possibly control either of these couple of pests. Well, when you think about it, you, you've got to know, like Brian said, which bug you're talking about because some are going to be in a stalk, uh, not the one Brian's holding today, but, but in a stalk, some will be down in the soil. And farmers a lot of times would think about tillage. Well, what about tillage? Because I know in no-till, when I leave their environment undisturbed for the winter, they've got a better shot of survival. What if I do some tillage? And that's one of the things that we talk about all the time with no-till. Yes, there are many advantages, and there are a lot of people around the United States that are well aware of, hey, we want to reduce erosion. We agree. In order to reduce erosion, we need to reduce tillage. So that's awesome. But the problem is when we reduce tillage, we do find more insects because we haven't disturbed their homes. In the old, I'll call them the old days, 50, 60, 70 years ago, people would mow board plow. They would turn that soil over. And in a lot of cases, they would bury some of those insects or just with the process of tillage, they would either disrupt the home or literally kill the insect that they wanted to control. So there certainly are ways that farmers can either, again, affect the home or just flat out kill the insect by doing tillage. But the downside is you're going to have more soil erosion when tillage is done. Well, there's always pros and cons with any decision. Another way that farmers can manage insects is through crop rotation. When you think about the corn rootworms that Brian talked about, well, if they laid eggs in this cornfield and now next year I plant soybeans, well, there's no home for those rootworms next year, no, no host crop for them to feed on, so you're going to have some mortality that way. The big trick for farmers, though, is to make sure you don't have any volunteer corn plants. So if there's corn that didn't make it into the combine or an ear that fell on the ground, make sure if there are any corn plants that sprout in that field that you kill them in some way or another, whether it's with the herbicide or pulling them or whatever it may be, so those rootworm larvae don't have a home next year. Well, one way or the other, most insects are able to survive in our soils, even in the northern United States where it's pretty cold, or at least most of the harmful insects that we really work 
worry about. So we as farmers have to be well aware of what's the insect, what is my crop rotation going to be, do I have a good way to control that bug with insecticide, and if not, maybe I need to start taking a look at tillage or some other way to increase the mortality of that particular insect so it can't survive the winter. Well, one other thing that won't survive the winter is our weed of the week. It's going to start new every spring. Can you identify this week's weed? Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm. Because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We counted. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. College students often get the short end of the stock when it comes to paying for an education. I'm Darren Hefty with Ag PhD, and if you seek a career in agriculture, I have great news. My brother Brian and I are hosting our first ever collegiate agronomy workshop. In addition to agricultural information, we provide you the chance to walk away with a college scholarship. The best part? Attendance is free. The workshop is on Thursday, January 3rd at the Morton Center in Baltic, South Dakota. For more information and to register, go to agphd.com. Tired of that old warped poly boom ruining your spray applications? Express Boom from Hypro is a fully assembled stainless steel boom that ensures an even application of chemicals every time. Don't wait another season. Upgrade today. Hypro, helping you spray better. No two seasons are the same. Each brings its own set of challenges. And you've seen a few. So many threats and not one single thing can be taken for granted. In the fight against the unpredictable, the Acceleron portfolio provides coverage on four fronts, fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, and bioenhancers. Rise stronger with one simple decision. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH factory trained service technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off-season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. Well, if harvest wasn't fun on your farm this year, if you had corn stalks that were starting to tip over or lodge, perhaps the first place you looked is inside that stalk to see if we were dealing with a stalk rot issue. Well, this year in 2018, we did see a lot of stalk rot issues, unfortunately. And really, the stalk rot is a result of stress. Why is the plant under stress? Well, this year we saw drought. We saw a lot of flooding or just excess moisture. We saw a lot of fields that really needed tile, didn't have tile, the water table was too high. We also saw fields where the weed pressure was tremendous. Also insects, diseases. There are a lot of issues this year. And, and let's take it one step further. How about fertility? Well, because of all the other conditions, the farmers either didn't get out to put the right fertility on, maybe they didn't do the right soil testing, they had leaching, they had denitrification of nitrogen. There were all kinds of problems. If the plant doesn't have the right fertility, it's also under stress. So when we've got all these stresses out there, then it's just much more easy for that plant to have an issue like stock rot as you get late in the season. You listed a lot of things there, Brian, but you didn't say it's the hybrid's fault. It's got to be the hybrid. Well, especially for farmers that saw multiple hybrids in the same field, and they said, well, this one had more of a problem 
than this other one. Are there some differences between hybrids? Certainly there are. Of course there's tolerance differences that each hybrid is going to exhibit. But I'll say this, it's generally not the hybrid's fault. There are a lot of different factors that Brian listed and it's for a reason. It's not to take away blame from a certain seed company. It's just that, you know what, there's a lot of factors that go into all these things because with any disease, you need to have a susceptible host. So yes, you need to have a hybrid that is somewhat susceptible, but you also need that pathogen present and then you need the right environment for all that to happen. And we certainly saw that with many of these areas that Brian talked about having extreme weather of one uh, kind or the other, maybe it was heat early and cool and wet later or vice versa, it doesn't matter. The plant went through multiple stresses through the year and one of the things that happened is it got sick and we got this disease in the stock. So you think about it just like human beings. If we can reduce stress, then we have a lot less chance to get disease, right? Same thing with your crop. So like Darren said, yes, we don't really want to blame the hybrid, but we do know some hybrids are better. So if you know that you've got the potential for more stock rot, or if you've had this issue in the past, try to pick out really good varieties that are more tolerant. But even so, even when you do that, that's not the total answer, and that's what we're trying to say today. So it really starts with you've got to have great drainage. If you do not have great drainage, you're so much more likely to have stock rot, it's crazy. So get that fixed first. Invest in some tile if you need to. Uh, maybe you've got to improve your calcium levels, do a little surface drainage, whatever it is, but fix the drainage. That's number one. Number two is always fertility. We talk primarily about potassium. That's the number one factor in stock rot. If I've got great potassium levels, and I, of course, had great drainage, I don't usually see a whole lot of stock rot. So when we talk about stock quality, it's potassium by far and away, number one, but then it's also manganese and it's copper. So look at those nutrients as well. Well, that is a big thing. You need a complete soil analysis if you're gonna try and diagnose some of these things. Any place that we see an issue with the combine, mark that spot. Then you can come back and do some specific soil testing in those areas, because a lot of times, hey, I just saw this in a couple of pockets out in the field. Find out what's out in there, and the only way to do it is a complete analysis. Yeah, and Darren mentioned, all right, you see this at harvest, but a lot of times these issues show up a little bit earlier in the year. We've started using a lot of satellite imagery on our farm. We do a lot of stuff with Farmer's Edge, for example, and we're getting daily satellite imagery. Well, you can see over time, some of these spots show up in the field and you go, ooh, there's something wrong there. That's right, there's something wrong. The question is what? And it's just like at harvest, when you see the yield map and you go, ooh, that spot's bad. Well, why? Well, at harvest, we, we can't really find a lot of the answers. So here's the point. Next summer, do at least a little bit of satellite imagery work, find out where those bad spots are, and then go out to those spots. Soil test, tissue test, look for weeds, insects, diseases, compaction, anything that could be causing the problem. Try to figure out what it is then, and now you have better management ideas going into the next year. All right, here's one other thing we haven't talked about yet. If your planter isn't perfect, you're going to have lots of problems. For example, this year, if you looked at your seeds and you said, man, some are up, some are not up yet, and it's a few days later before those other ones pop up, Look at those stalks all the way through the season. You can go out in a harvested field and see it right now that the stalk diameter differences are tremendous. And which plants are gonna suffer more? The plants that don't have a good root system, that don't have a good stalk, they're just weaker all the way through the year. So make sure you're checking that with your planter, that you're getting everything placed at exactly the same depth, getting that spacing just right, getting your seeds singulated so you have good even emergence and a better chance to prevent these diseases going forward. Once again, we did see a lot of stock rot issues this year. We are concerned about it going into next year. So like we say, pick the right hybrids, take care of your drainage and fertility, and hopefully you'll be in a lot better shape in 2019. And don't forget to control weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. This agro liquid line is something special. A lot of really impressive playmakers. Take a look at Sure K. This guy is an enigma. But wrap your head around the exceptionally high plant response when compared to conventional potassium sources, the research proven plant availability, plus flexible application options and mixing capabilities. Really stellar performance stats. Sure K is a true standout, and that's a winning goal on any field. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. 
That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. The system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Farmers across the country have put their confidence in the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. These are their experiences. My level of confidence and, and satisfaction is high right now. I am 100% satisfied with the Extend the Max with Vapor Grip technology. The yield on the Extend soybeans, I feel very confident that those are the leading soybeans on the market. It has worked 100% for us. So we're sticking 100% with it all the way right now. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. The future. Does thinking about it fill you with fear and doubt? Do you try to second-guess the grain markets just to keep your farm operating, or do you have a plan? At Swenson Investments and Commodities, we recognize that finances for every farm are unique and input costs and break-evens can vary dramatically from field to field. Swenson's grain marketing specialists examine your farm's break-even on every acre and create a plan to help you sell at profitable levels. Take the emotion out of your grain marketing. Call Swenson's grain marketing specialists today. Should you do deep soil tests on your farm? All right, if you're doing zero to six inch tests, we think that's great. We're, we're happy that you're doing soil testing. That's where a lot of your roots are, not certainly not even close to all of them, but at least a lot of the roots. And that's also where you can change a lot of things fairly quickly in that top six inches. But we do want you to at least occasionally, at least in a few spots in your fields, check down at 6 to 12 inches, 12 to 18, 18 to 24. If you check all those depths, we're looking for a couple of different things. First of all, we want to find out how many of our nitrates, sulfates, boron, all these leachable nutrients, how many of those have moved down into that area because we can still access them a lot of times with our roots. The other thing we're curious about is how about the other nutrients like P and K, for example. Just consider this, if your ground is dry, well, where is there moisture a lot of times? If you have a little drought in the summer, you've got moisture down at 12 inches deep. You probably have roots down there. You're probably extracting moisture, but if you aren't able to extract any nutrients, your yield's going to suffer. So if you see, oh boy, I have no nutrients down there and I'm really loaded up in the top six inches, maybe that tells you, you know what, let's figure out some way to get a little more fertility deep. You know, a lot of times you'll dig roots up down a couple of feet deep and you say, man, got all my root hairs in the top few inches and then down deep the roots just don't have any proliferation there's no root hairs it, it just doesn't look like much of a root system deep the reason why is there's no nutrients down there when you're doing those tests like brian mentioned most farmers that i talk to that say yeah i'm doing some deep soil testing when i look at the test the only thing they're testing for is nitrate so find out what else is going on because if you're seeing a lot of nitrate down in those deep tests you're probably like oh man i should have split applied my nitrogen because i've got some leaching going on so it's a bad thing if you're really seeing anything show up on those deep tests take a complete soil analysis where it's actually a good thing if you do see some micronutrients and, and P and K and so forth down at deeper levels in the soil to feed your crop. The first farmer in the United States who was consistently raising 300 bushel corn, his name was Herman Warsaw in Illinois back in the 1970s. That's a long time ago. The first guy who raised 400 bushel corn in the United States, and he did it many times, was Francis Childs in Iowa. He did that in the 1980s and 90s. Again, a long time ago. Well, what were these farmers doing right? We've looked at their soil tests and one of the interesting things you'll see is it wasn't just their top six inches they had built up. They also had built up that six to 12 inch zone and even a little bit below that too. So the point is, 
if we can build up our deeper levels in the soil over time we believe that's a really good thing again especially in a dry year but even in a in a normal year i just want you to dig up your plants a little bit and see what percentage of roots you've got below six inches it's often pretty high now Darren mentioned, okay, not a lot of root hairs. Part of that could be because you don't have enough calcium down there and not enough oxygen. It could be because you don't have good drainage so you don't have enough oxygen. But to his point, if you had more fertility there, the odds are pretty high you're gonna be able to extract that with a decent root system. Yeah, one of the things we talk about for farmers who are spreading manure on their fields or injecting manure is put it in a little bit deeper. When we look at some of the soil tests and see how concentrated the nutrients are in the top few inches or maybe even the top six inches, getting manure down deeper, maybe it's 12 inches or 18 inches on your farm, if you can do that, uh, is a good way to go. Oftentimes you have to go to a smaller machine to apply, so it's going to take a little more time. But if you're running something like a straight shank where you can drop things in at 18 or 20 inches deep, building up that lower profile can really help you, especially when you get into some dry years as well. We're not saying you have to test in every spot in every field or anything like that, but do at least some deep soil testing. You'll figure out real fast how you're doing overall in fertility, where you should better place fertility. If you're losing some of your fertility to leaching, all those types of things, it'll be well worth it for you. One other thing to watch when you're out in your fields is for weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? is water pod. Water pod is a weak little weed that grows in areas where there's no crop canopy. It grows in, in wasteland or undisturbed land. It grows in little drown out spots out in your field. It's not the toughest thing to kill. Almost any herbicide that, that you're using on your farm is probably gonna have some activity on water pod. But it is one of those weeds that, hey, you know what, if you let it go to seed, you're gonna have more of it to fight next year, so you just as well get rid of it right away. All right, let's talk about control methods. In corn, you can start with many different pre's. Verdict would probably be our favorite, but there are several others that will work just fine. Post-emerge, we like status best, or one of the HPPDs will be just fine on this particular weed. In wheat, I like sharpened down, followed by husky. In soybeans, of course, you've got Roundup, Liberty, and Extend options. Those are great, but if you're in conventional beans, you can still start with a good pre. Our three pre strategy works very well. My favorite product is probably Authority MTZ. Then post-emerge, you've got choices. I would use something like Raptor or Pursuit plus Flexstar. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week water pod, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Morton is eager to make the building you've always dreamed of a reality. Visit us online at mortonbuildings.com. 
Let's take a look at our picks for the championship season. We've got 10 30 No, no, no. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about this agro liquid team. Take a look at this lineup. They got it all. The talent, their players can meet any challenge on any field. The coaching staff, the best I've seen. So that's your pick? No discussions? Nope. Agro liquid is the team. They're going all the way to the championship. <laughs> No two seasons are the same. Each brings its own set of challenges. And you've seen a few. So many threats, and not one single thing can be taken for granted. In the fight against the unpredictable, the Acceleron portfolio provides coverage on four fronts. Fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, and bioenhancers. Rise stronger with one simple decision. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Avoid the V-shaped pattern of injury caused by chemical buildup in your booms. The Express end cap from Hypro eliminates the dead ends that lead to herbicide buildup and provides easy access to your booms, giving a complete flush between applications. Hypro, helping you spray better. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. piece of equipment that was invaluable to our farm this fall was our chopping corn head. It's been such an important piece of equipment on our farm and my brother Brian says he will never raise corn without a chopping corn head again. I'll explain in today's Iron Talk. 2018's harvest season was terribly wet on our farm. We were able to get harvest completed, but all those other field prep jobs for next year's crop were just about impossible to get done. Thank goodness our chopping corn head sized our corn residue up for easier handling next spring. Here are a few of the important things that we've looked for as we've chosen our chopping corn heads and what we've liked over the last five years. First, getting even feeding of the plant through the header is critical to even residue distribution. For that reason, we didn't want a bolt-on or add-on component approach. We wanted a chopping corn head that was a chopping corn head from the start. We also wanted a 12-row header, and having one that folds is a must for our operation. This saves so much time. It easily saves a half an hour to an hour each time we move from one field to the next, having a head that folds. This really adds up over your harvest season. Third, minimal maintenance time is so important for us. Our header only has two grease points on each row unit that need grease about every 50 hours. And other than the PTO drive lines, the remainder of the head is seasonal maintenance only. Finally, durability. There's a big difference in many factors on a corn head when you look at the fine details, like even how the deck plates are shaped. Ours, for example, have a rolled edge design, which should multiply wear life by as much as five times normal deck plates. It also has an upward beveled shape to pick the ear cleaner and to minimize loss to shelling. This is a big deal again in 2018, as many farmers saw moistures plummet in their cornfields down to 14 to 17 percent moisture grain, which led to more shelling loss at the head. There are many reasons you may choose a chopping corn head on your farm, and there are some big differences between brands. So do your homework before making that choice for your operation. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD Radio Show, where we take your live phone calls each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Sirius XM Channel 147. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.